All right, welcome back to the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast. Today we have a double feature. We have Anthony and Sergio Pettis joining us on the show. Um, Anthony Pettis obviously needs no introduction, but he's someone I've been following since actually 2010 uh, on the on the World of Jinx show, which we'll get into. I'm sure we're going to talk about. Um, he was featured on that show on MTV, followed his career ever since, and he didn't disappoint. Sergio now coming up uh, the same way Anthony did. Uh, getting the wins, doing really well, and he's actually headlining the next Bellator card coming up um, on July 24th, which is only a week away. So great timing on that. I actually uh, reached out to these guys before that was even announced. So this all sprung up, and uh, we definitely want to get into it. So let's get started. All right, Anthony, Sergio, welcome to the show. What's up, bro? Good to see you guys. Congratulations, first of all, uh, Anthony, on your last win against Donald Cerrone. Got to be happy about that. Yeah, I mean, that's a crazy one. We were at a training camp during COVID, and uh, it was a 20-day camp. It was, it was a fun one. I was going to ask you, what was that like fighting? Uh, we did it on The Ultimate Fighter, but obviously, uh, what was it like fighting with no audience, and, and what, was the, what was the change in dynamic on that for you? Man, it was weird. I mean, like, even when they announced the uh, decision, because usually I go off the crowd. You know, I know if I like I like a good punch, the crowd goes crazy. And I, like, I didn't even realize that until like, I was in there fighting. Like the crowd tells me how well I'm doing in the fight usually. Yeah. So uh, you know, hearing Duke cheer for me and, and Serge cheer for me, and then hearing his corner cheer for him, it was just kind of hard to tell where everything was at. So um, yeah, you know, once once the fight was over, it was definitely a different experience. Yeah, that was crazy, man. There was a slugfest too. That third round was insane. Crazy one, man. Yeah, I mean, he came to fight though. He came to fight. He always does, and so do you. <laughs> I think he was he was mad about the Connor knockout, so he came he came he came to throw down. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, it was a great made for a great great match. And then Sergio, we we all uh, obviously uh, reached out to you guys before for the podcast, but they just announced your big fight coming up. So you have a huge fight coming up, headlining uh, Bellator, finally coming back during the pandemic, and you're fighting Ricky Bendejas, yeah. Yep, yep. Very excited, man. Excited to get back to work. It's been a couple of months, so got uh, nine days before I get back in that cage. I know it's like a week away, man, and like it, they kind of snuck this up. I, I had uh, Benson Henderson on the show a while back, and then I had King Mo here recently, and nobody knew when Bellator was coming back. So like it was like it seems like it was just like there was no plans, nobody knew anything, and then now all of a sudden in one week you get announced as a main event fighting in uh, Mohegan Sun. Yeah, I just found out yesterday that I was going to be headlining it too. So yeah, I didn't know anything about uh, the placement of the car or anything. I just knew that I had a fight. Uh, they gave me at least like four and a half week notice. So I had a, I had a good camp. Cool, man. That's awesome. And then it's funny. I actually fought in the Mohegan Sun, but it was like ages ago, man. It was like 2000. I don't even remember. It was like before UFC. I was, it was actually WC. So it was, it was actually in the WC oh, wow. show, which obviously you're familiar with uh anthony but uh yeah i fought there it's cool it's like a coliseum the way the the seating is going up and it's, it's pretty cool venue it's gonna be weird with no no audience obviously <laughs> I, I assume that's what they're gonna do <laughs> have they have they told you like anything about how the format's gonna be of the show or no honestly uh not not too much they just kind of just kind of figured everything out this is their first show coming back so uh just sent the rules and the regulations for the covid and i guess i'm gonna figure out as we go and training's been cool. Like, I mean, you, I mean, with the with the quarantine and with people having, obviously, a lot of people in America having COVID now, um, has it been normal training for you, or have you had to kind of like lose some training partners and kind of focus more on, on just uh, your coach and then and, and your main training partners? Yeah, yeah, we got like a main team for our pro squad, so uh, the team's pretty small. So uh, everyone's just been consistently training. Honestly, it's not been any different besides uh, just uh, obviously just a little bit more a uh, little bit more safety. Cool. And, and you're excited, I assume, coming back and uh, headlining this event and being able to fight again after all this, not knowing when Bellator was coming yeah. back. I'm excited. I saw Anthony fight with no crowd, so I'm gonna, I want to finally try and get it done. You know, first, first time uh, fighting uh, in COVID, so yeah, making some history in Bellator too. That's crazy, man. What you know, because my staff knew that that I was gonna have you guys on the show, and and one of my guys, one of my social media guys, actually just sent me a video of you, Anthony, kicking Sergio. And the balls when he's got like a bottle on his head. What, what exactly is that about, man? Like, because I saw you kick the bottle off his head once, and it was like, all right, mission accomplished. And then y'all started setting it up again, and I was like, oh shit, this isn't gonna be good. Something's gonna happen. But you did the you did the full spinning kick right to the to the groin. Holy shit, man! What was that about? 
Man, he had a diamond cup on though, so shout out to Diamond Cups. Yeah, I would make the best cups in the game. I was protected. Is that is that kind of like still, felt, still is that is that normal family life for you guys growing up? Just like doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, hey, man, I've been doing this. I've been pro now for um, thirteen years, so it's, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. Like he followed right after me, so man, we've been doing this for a long time. So we got to make it fun to, to keep doing yeah. it. You know, and I, I plan on doing this as long as I can, and I'm having fun doing it. So and he, he's always been the prankster. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get kicked in the groin on the twenty fourth, you're gonna be ready to go, man. Because if you could take a spinning kick from Anthony Pettis, you're gonna be you're gonna be just <laughs> fine. So if I see you milking that five minutes, I'm gonna know you're just milking that oh. five minutes because you're gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play the game if I have to. <laughs> no, I get it, bro. I get it. I Trust me. I get it, man. Definitely you got to do what you got to do. I want to say, uh, going back, man, Anthony, so this might be weird, but uh, or, or I guess uh, out of left field, but I actually found out about you originally. I was in the UFC for a while. I'd already fought for for quite some time, and I was watching the show World of Jinx on, on MTV. Yeah. And they, they had this episode coming up about fighting. And I was, you know, anything that was about fighting and, and, and on TV and, like, helping bring the sport mainstream, I was excited about. And I was like, oh, shit, he's going to do this thing on fighting. And he was, you know, you know Anthony was doing all this crazy stuff. And, and it featured you. And so that was the first time I got to, like, know you and, and see your story. And then you had, the, the, obviously, the big fight coming up and stuff. So what was that experience like? And how did you get on that show? Like, how did you get casted to be... Or, or I guess accepted to be the the fighter of that that program. Yeah, uh, I think it was Sean Shelby, um, Dave Scholler. Dave Scholler at the time was doing WC. They reached out and they were like, "Hey, you know, MTV is interested in doing a, a, a documentary on one of our fighters." They picked me, your eye favor. I mean, there's a bunch of guys that sent in tapes, like the promo tape. Um, so I sent I did my little five minute tape, sent it in, and then uh. And I get a call from Andrew Jenks, and he's like, yeah, we chose you. We want to follow you around, and, you know, we want to see what the life of a fighter is. Yeah. Um, and I was coming off of a loss, so it was kind of it was kind of weird because it was like my first loss ever against yeah. Mark Pelicheski. Yep. All of a sudden, MTV's coming, and I didn't even know what the heck was going to happen. You know, so they show up with, you know, a big camera crew. Like, there's like a two two film, two uh, camera guys, Andrew Jenks, the two audio guys, and then, like, the director. So it's a, it's a nice-sized crew, um, and they followed me around for, like, 10 days before the fight. Um but it just made me more, just more, you know, ready to go. Like I just, yeah, I just wanted, of course. You know, obviously, the world was gonna be watching twice. So I was like, yeah, I can't lose on, uh, you know, on television, doing WC, and lose on MTV. So <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was uh, a lot on the line, man. So you know, I, I went in there with, uh, you know, just I knew what I had to do. I was like Danny Castillo, a wrestler. Um, what he likes to do with those hands. Um, do do call the play out. I do the play, and boom, high kick knockout. And uh, that's crazy. It was beautiful, you know. It's like I get these big moments, like even the the the, the uh, Showtime kick, Ben Henderson. You know, I get these big moments that just uh, you know help my career just go 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 skyrocket. Well, first of all, I mean that was what got me to know you, and I became a big fan, man. I followed you ever since. So when you went on to to win those big those big fights it was cool because i had seen you you know originally on this show and you were kind of like in a desperate situation it seemed like like you had to win this fight and you were just trying to make it and i could totally yeah. relate to that man i had already went through those times and like and 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 had a similar situation because um i i was fighting in the wec and dana white himself came to the w one of my last wc fights and he was looking to recruit me and and mike kyle at that fight and that was when I fought for the championship at WC, and I fought Chris Lieben. So I got, I got, I mean, it was knocked out, but I, I got TKO'd. I wasn't like out, but like I got TKO'd right in front of Dana White, like literally, like he was front row. I got TKO'd, and then right after that was when the Ultimate Fighter started casting. So I was in the same boat of like, you know, this yeah, is why yeah. you never know when the chances come, and why you never give up and think that there's no hope. You know, I'm sitting there coming off a loss right in front of Dana White, like a, a pretty devastating, obviously TKO, my first big loss, my, my first loss at all. Uh, and then uh, they started casting for the Ultimate Fighter, which I didn't even apply for. I wasn't even like, I'm like, come on, like the, <laughs> he just saw me get beat. You know, like there's no way he wants me on the show. And I was one of the last people to get casted because they kept asking for AKA guys to send tapes in, and I did. They ended up flying me to Vegas. I did the casting process, and then I ended up on the Ultimate Fighter. Then I go on the Ultimate Fighter, oh the big opportunity, right? And and I had to take uh, light heavyweight because that was the only thing available because I, I couldn't do middleweight. So I was like the smallest light heavyweight. I went on the show and was ready to fight. I was hungry. I trained so hard every day. I wasn't getting into bullshit. I was like focused as, as more, just as much as anyone else. And then I fought Stefan Bonner in one of the last fights, a semifinal fight. 
and then he armbarred me from a triangle. So now I, I got TKO'd in front of Dana White to get on the Ultimate Fighter. Then I lost on the Ultimate Fighter, and then I still got my UFC opportunity after that, and then went on a tear all the way to title contention yeah. fight with Yushin Okami after after winning five and zero. So so it's like you never know, man. Like people they get down on their luck after they lose a fight or they have a bad performance, and, and like you said in, in your situation too, you just never know, man. You got to show up every time and fight, and then just get, keep that positive attitude, and, and things can just happen. Because I would have never thought I would have gotten the UFC and then went on a tear in the UFC off two losses like that, especially right in front of them. But it happened that way. And I think a lot of times things happen like that. So it's, it's cool, man, to like, to see stuff like this position that you were in, and then you go on to become the champion. Then you go on to have all these crazy kicks and highlights and then go in the UFC and then become a champion there as well. Um, so that's really cool, man. Appreciate it. Growing up, what, what was y'all's inspiration for being fighters? Like, where, at what point did y'all decide to get in martial arts? I assume you did first, Anthony, but what was it that actually, because I was like watching movies like The Karate Kid and like I wanted to be like Chuck Norris and Steven Seagal and stuff like that. What was it that actually like got you guys into martial arts? Yeah, we didn't have a choice. So my mom was going to a um, night college and then she was working full time during the day. So like oh, wow. when she was going to night college, in her college, it's called El Verno College. It's, uh, it was all female college. I think they, they mixed it up now. But um, they had a Taekwondo program. So we would spend um, every day after school, 4 o'clock to like 9 o'clock doing Taekwondo. Um, I hated it. It was like the <laughs> yeah. worst thing ever. So I would, I would learn it and I would teach it. And then we would do our sparring. It was just a long process every day. Um, and then uh, I, for me, it was the business side that I was interested in. You know, I saw my Taekwondo instructor run his gym or in the school, like how, the life that he lived, how he did it. And I was, I was inspired by that. So I opened my first gym up with my older brother. So at like 16, I was running a pretty successful Taekwondo school. Um, in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, and then that's when the UFC was like blowing up crazy big. We're like, man, if we want to stay in business, we got to obviously learn jujitsu and kickboxing. And then I was the younger brother, so they sent me out to go, or he sent me out to go learn kickboxing and jujitsu from uh, Duke Rufus. So at that time, Duke's gym was like the best place in Milwaukee to learn kickboxing and jujitsu. Yeah. So I go sign up there, and I just fall in love, man. Like it was just like a, a whole new world for me. And, like I was trying to show my other, like I showed my older brother. He started fighting kickboxing. I showed Serge, you know, because we were really, really, Serge was a world champ in Taekwondo. So, like, we were very successful in Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. And then once we found this two other sports, you know, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, and then he wrestled in high school. So it was just like, I just I kind of found us at the right time. And then we were, before that, I lost my dad. It's so, like mm -hmm. my dad was killed in a house robbery across the street from our house. Um, you know, so it was like one of the devastating things in, in my life that I kind of had to make a decision. And, and I found MMA at perfect time, man. So it kind of just it saved me for real. That's great. And they went, in, they went into detail a little bit about that on the show, right? World of Jinx, I, I remember. Yeah. And it's crazy yeah. because, I, I mean, just, just to compare, it's weird that, that, that uh, we kind of had similar backgrounds because I lost my father at a young age as well. And then I also started in Taekwondo. I just, uh, I just yeah. didn't like the forums and the, the, the other stuff. I just wanted to spar all the time. That, I, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the sparring, but I didn't want to do the forums and learn all that stuff. And like, so I, I just sparred, 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 sparred until I finally moved on to kickboxing and 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 then eventually MMA. Dang man, that's crazy. Same path, crazy. Crazy. It's like We got tired of like I was tired of losing the guys I was better than. I'm like, dude, I can beat yeah. these guys in a real. Fight. And like they're just like barely touching me and like what a back yeah. fist and I'm losing. I'm like, man, <laughs> like, no. Then that's what made me switch over. Was it like a tough transition when you got into like kickboxing or MMA from like keeping your hands so low and like being so flashy? I mean, obviously you carried on the flashiness very well and transitioned it very well into MMA. But for me, like I had my yeah. hands so low, like when I was uh, in Taekwondo, it was always like my hands were like down here and I was throwing these high kicks. And then I just started getting just bashed up when I started boxing and kickboxing. And I was like, shit, man, I gotta put my hands up. They should have taught me that in Taekwondo. I don't know, was it the same yeah, for you? So it helped me out. My cousin was a boxer. He did, he did like pro boxing, and then Milwaukee's like there's some pretty good boxers here. Like it's a pretty big deal here in Milwaukee, and like the Hispanic community. So I boxed. Um, I was learning boxing at a young age too. So I, I had like the the traditional defense, like you know, for street fighting and how, how I need to fight. <laughs> yeah. Then I had my flashy style. So like that's how I kind of keep it the same way. You know, when, I, when I'm in the fire, I got my traditional. And then when I'm longer and I have my range, that's when you see my my, my flashy style. And then what, at what point were y'all? Because you were a Taekwondo champion, you were in Taekwondo as well. And then you, eventually you transition transition well, transition. I can't talk uh, into MMA. At what point was it when you realized you wanted to be a pro in MMA and that you had the skills to do so, and this was going to be your thing to do as far as like as a career? Man. Yeah, I went pro quick. You know, it's like I went to the gym to initially learn to teach kickboxing and jiu-jitsu to my students. So like. 
I was um I was training all day, and then I would teach class at night at my gym. So I would like learn everything at each gym, and then at nighttime I'd go teach my two classes, jujitsu and kickboxing. So I was like having to learn this information and understand it, so I could go teach it to my guys and not sound stupid. So like it was like an extra process where it happened like really fast, and I learned it really quick. And then uh, I think I, it was three months into training that I had my first my first fight, and wow. uh, I finished it in like 24 seconds. Wow! It was like you know it was like it was quick quick knockout. I really loved it. Um, and then like I followed up the next one it was like 31 seconds, and the next one was like uh, everything was under a minute. My first three fights were under a minute. I'm like, man, we got to go pro. And this all happened like in the the first uh, year of me training at, at Duke's gym. And then uh, we went pro. I had three four pro fights. And I fought Rob Roy, Sharon Leggett. He was on, like, the Tap Out show. Yeah. I, I beat him in Milwaukee here for, to win the title. And then uh, I got the WEC call. And I, I got that belt in, like, two years. So it was, like, yeah. uh, quick, quick. And Damn. then UFC belt I got in three, uh, two years, too. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it, was a quick, it was a quick transition for me for all these things, man. That's a credit to you, though, man, because you put it on the line every time. And you go for stuff. And, and, and you know, that's where it's at. A lot of fighters don't realize. I'm not going to say names, but there's a lot of fighters that play it safe. And, and then they later complain because they're not as popular and they may not have as much money or whatever the case. But it's in, you know, we got to stop and think. Of course, it's fighting and it's competing, but it's entertainment. You know what I mean? We're no different than actors or whatever else. So it's like as long as we can get people that want to watch us, we can make the most and, 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 and get the most success. And you've always had that style. So I can, you know, and then it works for you. You land those big kicks and those, those big flashy those big flashy things. So when you got into MMA, um, or when you started training MMA, you started right out with Duke at Duke Rufus. Like that's that was the first place you trained. Yeah, well, I, I tried out um, actually Dave Strauser. He was actually um, pretty popular too. And I was my my Taekwondo gym was like maybe 15, 20 minutes from his place. So I would I, I stopped in and spar a couple times at his place. But um, my main training all happened at, at Duke Rufus gym at Rufus Sport. And that's a good. I mean, you got you enjoy it, huh? Like I talked to Duke a while back. I want to get him on the show and and talk to him a little bit. Yeah, man, sure. That's a dude. Man. He knows he knows so much about fighting, and he's like a, uh, an encyclopedia on fighting. Right? He does every fight, who who won, what date, you know, what weight class. Yeah. He, he knows everything about. Fighting. Like it's it's a great a great conversation. He seems amazing, man. Like I I, re I reached out to him. Like it was kind of around the Tyron fight, and then so after that, we just kind of I, I let him have some time and stuff, and and then. Uh, he had already mentioned he wanted to come on the show, so I'm looking forward to having him on actually and talking to him because I mean he seems like such a great coach. For sure, man. He's dedicated. Yeah, and and so for you guys coming up training together in MMA, being brothers, how has that played out in the gym as far as the have y'all beat each other up or like I know the Lawazan brothers, Joe and and them, they would always get in fights and say I'd fight each other in a real fight and all this kind of stuff. Did y'all have like was it a good competitive edge that kept pushing you guys forward? Or was it like an ego thing where like if Sergio lands on you or you land on him and like you got to get him back and it became like gym battle kind of thing. Like how, how was it for you guys? Or I guess still is. How how is it for you guys in the gym when you guys, when you guys train together? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's uh, too much of a, you know, like competition wise. I feel like we've just worked on getting each other better, like the whole yeah. time, honestly. There's times where obviously you hit me, I'm like, all right, I need to crack him back. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> other than that, I don't think it's got too out of hand. We got good control. We've been doing Taekwondo our whole lives. So I feel like that helped out a lot. Definitely competitive at some times, but uh, and I just feel like it's just more of a process of getting each other better. A little a little harder on him after he kicked you in the balls, though, on that next session? <laughs> That was that Mel Brook control, man. I, I don't, I don't can't have a kid now, so. <laughs> you got to be forming some kind of plan to get him back for that one, though, huh? We're waiting for that video, uh, yeah, man. We're best, waiting for that video. The best, There's dude. always, you always got to get him back, dude. Somehow, so you're not safe, Anthony. He's coming for you, buddy. We're gonna get a video of this. <laughs> no, <man. laughs> What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. I'm telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on.
who are you looking to fight next, Anthony? Like, obviously, you got this win over Cerrone now. Um, and you've done everything. Uh, I wanted to ask you kind of a two-part question. Like, 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 have you gotten out of MMA what you've wanted as far as, like, if, if you never fought again, are you satisfied with what you've done? I mean, obviously, you've, you've been a multiple world, a world champion. Um, and then also, what is it that you're looking for next? Obviously, you, you haven't retired or anything. So uh, what is it and who is it that you're looking to fight or uh, – go next yeah for me man like um i think once i'm like not having fun doing this or it's not like when i wake up and i feel like man i don't want to go to the gym that's when i'm, I'm gonna be done like I, i'm not gonna force myself past that point i've had some tough fights you know i've i always fight the best option you know like the, the, you know the ufc works you know they give you this guy this guy this guy i've always fought the best option even when i went to 170 i fought wonder boy i think he was like number three in the world so like, I, I take the risk on the guys i'm fighting but them are the fights that make me feel alive them are the fights that make me go to the gym and study and think about how to beat this guy. It's more than just, you know, a physical thing. It's like a mental training thing. So, like, um, once I started getting to the mental aspect of fighting, like, it, it, it just changed my whole aspect of training. You know, like, now I'm not trying to, like, go win these fights. I'm not sparring to, like, like have a war with Sergio. I'm like, yo, I, if I do this and this and this, it exposes this. And, like, them are the games I'm playing. So um, I'm in a whole different world, man, like, where I'm, where I'm training at now. So now I just got to get this to match in my performances. You know, Kyle Wood was the first step. Um, yeah, but like I said, I'm fighting tough guys. You know, I'm fighting. I'm fighting the guys that are the, the best in the world. And you know, if you have one flaw or one mistake, it, you, you, you you lose. And that's where I've been. I, I would get a win, I get a loss. I get a win, I get a loss. So I'm a little frustrated in that aspect of it. Um, do I feel like I got everything out of MMA? I've been blessed, man. Like mixed martial arts giving me such a great life. Um, yeah. Seeing Sergio being able to do it now, he's the main event. You know, doing you know making good money. This is his house. You know, I'm at his house now. So yeah, um, that's it's, awesome. it's cool to see. Um, what what I what what he's been able to do with it, so I'm definitely blessed, man. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm done yet, but I, I definitely if, if everything everything stopped, I'm blessed to see what I what I've saw and what I've done. Yeah, and you were gonna take crazy. the you were gonna <laughs> fight if I remember correctly, you were gonna fight Habib on like one day's notice, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they just want to play. You know, you know how UFC works, man. Like they're trying to find uh, uh, the guy who take it for the least amount of money or like what makes the most sense. And yeah, you know, I wasn't gonna budge. I've been forever so i'm like yo I, I, why why go risk that again you know i've been there before i'll get it yet if i, if I need what if i can and then you're fighting welterweight now how is that how, how is that transition to welterweight and and is that is it's i mean is that not too big for you you feel comfortable with that weight i think i'm trying to fight anderson man that's the fight i want next anderson silva anderson um, at 85 you're gonna anderson fight silva, 85. That's, right. that's the fight I, that's the at 85 yeah Damn. i just want to go to, i mean he can't make 70 i don't think he can make no, he can get sure. all the way down there he said, like, what do, you, what do I want to see in this sport? Like, them are the fights I thought about you know, coming up. Like, now that I'm close, like, I can make 85 into a comfortable 85. I'm training with 85ers at my gym right now. Um, you know, Gerald Nershard, Brandon Allen. I, got, I have some good 85ers that I'm, I'm getting to work with. And, uh, you know, I, I know the UFC and, the, and everybody else, like, Pence is too small. But I'm, I feel good right now at, at, at the higher weight classes. You know, I'm catching these guys. And I, I don't think it's so much about the physical aspect. I got the speed. I got the uh, – the athleticism and I and I have the knowledge of what to do in these positions. You know, I don't have to go in there and like fight with this this strength that that these eighty fivers have. If I could touch your chin, you know, I showed in the Wonder Boy fight. You know, I yeah, of course, it was a great fight. Yeah, and you have that show style. I mean, I think a, a match with you and Anderson would be incredible just because of y'all's y'all's style, the 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 way y'all throw your strikes, and that can't be anything but entertaining. Yeah. So, would it be safe to say then you're more chasing at this stage, like big fights, like super fights versus grinding to get a belt? I mean, would that be a safe thing to say? Since yeah, I think I think I will. I'll, I'll go back to a grind and like find my position and see where I want to go at. But I'm kind of like in this, like I said, man. I just found this like position of training where I'm so into the mental side of it. It just feels good to be thinking of that spot. Because like when I was a champ, I had no idea of, of the mental health and yeah. understanding, you know, how to be happy when you're training and not letting your life be dictated off a win or loss and and like measuring social media and under, like yeah. understanding all that stuff and once once i got hit to that game man i was like bro i once i once i put that together with my skill set and everything that I, I know how to do i'm just it's just gonna happen i'm just gonna stay grinding and, and keep keep dipping my my feet in the water and once i once i get that right that right path i'm, I'm going all in that's awesome man and then and sergio what about you like what's your what's your deep calling for uh for the sport like what are you looking to pull out of the sport before you're satisfied and 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 what you've done in ending your career um i feel like i need to get a, a belt you know just uh just because i need one you know i want to be a champ of an organization uh belt sword ufc or you know wherever i go but um i mean as of right now i mean i was just uh just making as much money as possible fighting fighting some good names and uh 
trying to just put on a show for everybody. Now I had a career of uh, at the UFC here. I did play it safe. You know, I was trying to win fights based off points, and I just feel like now I'm trying to time to break out of that and just you know show the world that I'm capable of uh, doing some some damage to these guys. So yeah, um, obviously, yeah. I mean, a lot a lot of goals left, but uh, I still got some time left. So we'll see. We'll see. That's awesome, man. And then both of you guys have, have had such fame and 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 glory with, with y'all's fighting. Obviously, Anthony being a champion and, and and you you winning your fights. What has been like the biggest like celebrity moment for you guys where uh, y'all were just kind of like, wow, this is like cool. Like it doesn't have to be necessarily a fight or a win, but just a moment where maybe you got in somewhere, you hung out with somebody, and it was the first time you were just like, oh shit, man, this is crazy. Like this would have never happened if I didn't choose this route and win these fights and for both y'all i've had so many though, man i, I know you that, have I, what's I, a big one the, the biggest the, like the first biggest one where you were just like wow they get to pinch yourself a little bit i would say when we smoked weed with mike tyson that's yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was wild. That was, <laughs> we, we did mike tyson show uh, the podcast um hot boxing and that was wild you know we're sitting, you know, smoking weed with mike tyson and talking about fighting and talking about you know just his his career that was through a surreal moment. Yeah, that was um, great. Man, I mean, I've had some I've had some good ones, man. But that was, that for sure was one of the top. And then Serge was there with me too, so I was like, when I got to share with somebody. So yeah, I would say that that has to be one of the highest ones. That's crazy. I haven't even met Mike Tyson yet. He's amazing, and now it looks like he's gonna fight again. Have you seen these videos of him? Bro, he's like a monster, yeah. bro. That's crazy. People's asking like, like, should he fight? Is it okay? Is it gonna be okay for his health at his age to fight? But it's like. Who can take a punch? I mean, he can't fight like a 20 year old. They're going to put him against somebody like a van or somebody his age or whatever. Who his age can take yeah. a punch like that? Like, it'll kill them. Like, they'll die. Yeah. It's not even about getting knocked <laughs> out. Facts. Yeah, that's going to crush some bones. I'm worried about the other people. Jesus, man. That's crazy. <laughs> And the hot box, and that must have been really cool because he's like he's like so honest and open. He doesn't care about what he says. I'm sure you had some fun moments in there learning about him, where because he, he has no filter, man. And I'm watching his show a lot, and it's just like incredible. And then I even saw Eminem. I said this on the last podcast with Doug Ellen, but I even saw Eminem do a do a podcast with him, and he was just fanboying out the whole time to Mike Tyson as well, just like man, I can't believe I'm here. You're you're the man. You I looked up to you so much. You were knocking everybody out. Like he's like a I mean, as far as in the combat sports world, he's kind of the king back then, you know, in our generation. For sure, man. And he's just, like, he's so open and, and a cool person, bro. Like, I, I was mad that I smoked so much weed because I couldn't even ask the questions <laughs> I wanted to ask. Like, he got too high. Weed, like, the type of friend. So, strong, so like, he, he grows it and he has, like, this big operation he's, he's making. And he was telling us his, like, business plans and just showed us, like, his operation, man. It was cool to see a life after fighting that could be like that. You know, obviously he's like a different level, but still it's just something, that's, some inspiration about, you know, after fighting, there is still some, some levels of competition that are totally different than fighting. So yeah. uh, he was sharing that with us. And then um, he just gets so deep and he was talking about relationships and like, he just looks in your eye and you can just like, he's not even looking, he's looking through you. Like, and, and you can just feel it. You're just like, man, I can't even, like all I, all I was saying was like, Damn, that's crazy. That's all I kept saying. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. I couldn't even talk. <laughs> yeah, I was too hot. I can imagine being in there with him, man. Like, I, like I said, I haven't even. I think I've, I've, I may have met him once, like in passing, really fast, but I haven't had any conversation with him or anything. And like, even watching the podcast, he can just pull the microphone away, and just the way he looks is incredible. Like, it says everything. You know what I mean? Like, just just his reaction to what you say and how he looks. It's just, it's just, it says so much. You know, like he's he's so. I don't know, man. It's, it's, he's such a strong, strong force and being, you know, when he's in there. And it's crazy, man. That's definitely crazy. He's speaking from the heart, man. He's always speaking from the heart. That's, that's, that, was the, that was the biggest thing I took away from that. Like, you can, I, I learned some stuff in that, like some, some emotional stuff. I was like, man, it's, it's, it's just deep. Yeah. And, and, be, and because just I, I've kind of set uh, things up before when I was in my career, kind of to set up things after. Have you guys and you mentioned business before about having a gym and stuff like that. Have you guys started taking steps to set up something for your post career so that I mean, obviously, we know what happens at the end of fighting. You can only fight for so long. And then and then so many fighters are just kind of stuck because they gave 100 percent till the very last day. And then they got to start over with something new. And then I'm sure y'all have been through this before, but when you start losing fights, things change a little bit, you know, or, or if you don't do as good, or if you maybe when you're not the champion, I'm sure things were a little bit different when you weren't yeah. the champion as when you were the champion. We've all been through that. So are y'all taking any steps to set up things for your post career? And what is it that you see your, yourselves doing, both of you, I guess, uh, after fighting? Like what would make you guys happy in a business after, after you get done fighting in the cage and 
and having a career. Yeah, I've got a couple businesses ready now. I've been doing it for a while, man. And I'm kind of changing. Like, obviously, with the COVID, it changes everything. You know, that, that shook. You know, I thought I was building this like this this uh, foundation, something I'm going to go yeah. to afterwards. But then COVID came. It's like, man, that's nothing safe. Like, who knows what's happening? Like, classes went to my – like, so I have gyms. I have a barber shop. Um, and I have, like, these, these programs that I have in the other gyms that they teach my stuff. But then once the COVID hit, it just took everything away. It's like it made me think about everything differently. You know, I wasn't mm-hmm. like – so involved into that style of um business you know because like, that, that 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 won't come back the way hopefully it comes back but i mean right now it's, it's still like who knows what's going to happen with that 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 aspect like california just closed back down so yeah, the change closed there again and uh there was only so much the sva can do for for these small business owners so that that was a scary thing for me but then like the stock market all over the place uh, real estate you know i have real estate but now it's like it's better to get in real estate now than so i'm yeah. trying to help surge you know definitely make them right decisions and then put his stuff all over the place where it's not all at one thing. Cause like right now he's all in the fighting, but yeah. you know, if, if we have little seeds here and there, real estate, stock market, um, some, obviously the, something with martial arts, when I do forever, like my pet is martial arts, I'll have that forever. Right. Um, but like I said, who knows what that monthly, um, what that brings, you know, until, until we all get past this COVID thing. No one yeah. knows. And what about you, Sergio? Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like right now I'm kind of the fighter that's all in right now, kind of figuring it out. But, but uh, I feel uh, eventually, you know, I'm gonna step into some some businesses, and um, obviously martial arts will always be there for me. Um, been interested in buying some properties and stuff, so just a matter of me taking the risk. But right now, it's just uh, really focused on you know making this still happen for me. Because yeah. Sergio started making real money, so like he's in a position where he actually he's now actually makes some power moves and some yeah. balls moves and. Set, set his stuff up for the future. So um, I'm excited to see and see what happens. I love that, man. Spot in his career. I love that attitude. That, that, that's where you, I mean, I can't wait to see your fight. You know, I love that attitude. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword because me coming up myself and then obviously coming up with AK with all the guys that made it there, you know, it, it, you have to be 100%, especially now for, for you guys. I'm, I'm out, you know. So it's like my generation, I, I would say, is a little bit easier than, than y'all's generation where it's like the guys, there, there's more people. There's more fighters. There's more athletes. There's more people coming into the sport with so much talent that weren't really interested in the sport before because it wasn't that – it wasn't interesting to them, you know. And now you got these these champion wrestlers – you got this champion, these the Thompsons. You got the, you got the champion strikers and kickboxers. You got all these guys with all this natural talent coming in. So it's a lot harder. Um, so you have to be a hundred percent focused in order to have a good career and to be successful. And sometimes that's not enough. Um, but at the same time, at some point, you have to make that decision to also set yourself up for your post career. And that's the biggest problem with every fighter is like when to do that and how to juggle that. And, and cause I took my lumps, you know, like I was coming to Thailand well before my career was over and I took my lumps because of it too. You know, I had losses at the end of my career and I wasn't focused as much because I was trying to build other stuff, which I'm happy I did now, but I suffered during my career. So I think that's kind of the toughest thing. And it's good for you, Sergio, that you have someone like Anthony who's kind of leading that charge and you can be focused so much on your fighting right now. And then I'm sure he's going to lend you a hand and help you out when that time comes. And, uh, and then, and then you'll, I think it's, I think it's, I think you guys are a great team man. it seems like, it seems like you guys are a perfect match for the, for the sport and, and to have each other uh, and have each other's back. Yeah, man, definitely blessed. You know, I think that was in our dad definitely, created a bond that's like a little different with our brother even my older brother too you know we have a different relationship than most brothers because uh we went through something like that you know you know so it's, it's you have any brothers no i don't man i was an only child so i have a half sister so i grew we, up we had to know each other for- yeah, I grew up selfish as shit, dude. I didn't want to. I didn't want to share anything. I didn't want to like. <laughs> I had to learn to share, and like, like, <laughs> and like, you know, like include other people. Like I was. Just, I grew up just selfish, taking everything for myself, dude. It's been the worst. It's been the worst thing in my later life because I got to like learn to like actually give part of my stuff to other people. That that was a tough one. But you said you had an older. You have an older brother. I didn't know that. So what? Uh, your older brother. What does he think? I, mean, I assume he's not a fighter, correct? Well, he did fight. Yeah, he's, he's he's actually the highest rank in Taekwondo of all of us. He actually oh, started wow. our gym up. But, okay. Um, he he did kickboxing. He started with kickboxing with us. He didn't do jujitsu like me and Serge did, but um, he kickboxed a couple times and uh, you know, teaches martial arts and he's all in. 
So he never got into MMA though, like competing MMA. No. Yeah. So what is what, is what what does he think about you guys? His two younger brothers out there just like just kicking ass in, in the MMA circuits. I think he loves it. I think. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. I mean, he definitely gets nerve wracking watching Surge fights crazy. So I can only imagine him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit, watching group fights crazy. Yeah. 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 I mean, just for me, it's teammates. It's always nerve wracking. Um, what, what, aside from kicking each other in the nuts and doing pranks, what do you guys do for fun? Like, what, what are some of the things you guys enjoy, like actually doing? To get your mind off of fighting, fishing, yeah. fishing, fishing is hard, hard. Yeah, I saw on your Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I just some just started up, man. Like he, he started going with my cousin, and then um, we just got all in, man. So we're we're all in the fishing now. And Wisconsin, like we live in Wisconsin. Um, well, I train I train in Wisconsin, and I live in Vegas too. So I, I go back and forth. But the fishing here is amazing. It's like it's really actually simple on Friday. I got I got two fishing trips set up to get on the lake and then to go at night boat fishing. Cool. So yeah, we've been That's fishing awesome. hard out here. And they just get your mind off everything, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, I got these businesses, man, too. So, like, I, like my a lot of my time is consumed by that as well. So, like, about my training, I'm, I'm right into to making sure these things are afloat and doing what's, what's supposed to be going on. I got employees, so I got to go handle all that. Um, then I have a fiancé and a daughter, so that, that's, yeah. like, my time is you know, pretty much consumed with all that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And I got to ask you before we go, um, have you guys ever trained in Thailand? Have you been to Thailand before or never before? I have, yeah. I mean, I went. So like, I set this trip up to Thailand. Um, the day I got there, the king died. Oh, wow. Changed. Yeah, man. So it was crazy. So like um, nothing was open. Everything yeah. was closed. We had to like wear all, all black. And, and the, it was it was a I just see, to see the level of respect they had for this man. I was like, wow. You know, like it was real sorrow. Like they're, the things that they're yeah. saying, how he like went to the towns that no other president, like no other king went into and you know, talked to the people, in, you know, a certain way. So it was like... Uh, for me to see that, I'm like, man, no one in the states that I could think of that would die that they would get that level of respect. Like, yeah, was, no, I don't think nobody. It's, it's a big thing here. Nobody yeah. that level. It's, it's amazing. It was amazing. Um, so, but it kind of messed up my my experience. I messed up. You know, I didn't get the full experience right. in Thailand, so I, I definitely want to come back with Surge. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, you I need to go. I want to come out. I want to see you guys come out to uh, yeah, to come train with us here at AK Thailand and uh, show you guys Phuket, man. Phuket is amazing. I was watching, uh, I follow Woodley, I follow you too, obviously, but I follow Woodley on um, Instagram, I saw his training out there, I'm like, bro, that looks, you guys are training the day and then doing, doing beach, tri uh, beach trips, and, and yeah. it looked amazing. It's a crazy life, man, you know, those islands, it's all real, you know, it's not like um, sensational, all the stuff we post, I mean, we have a media team that just covers kind of how it is, and, and it's, it's really crazy here, so, I mean, like Tyron probably told you, it's like real low stress compared to America where everything's kind of high strung and everyone's moving so fast. I mean, you go to the grocery store in America and people are like pushing their carts so fast, trying to like hurry up to get to something else and to go somewhere else. And like here is just so laid back, so relaxed, so chill. Um, the people so friendly, the food is healthy, the food is good and fresh. And then you got the beaches, you got the islands. I mean, like a lot of those islands that you saw me and Tyron training at, I mean, they're 45 minutes yeah. away from AKA Thailand. You, you jump on a fast boat, you're gone and then you're on the island. So it's just a cool, it's a cool life, man. And that's what I wanted to do was build a gym that was like adequate enough. Cause I was training Muay Thai gyms for 20 years coming back and forth. And then I'd have to go back and start my fight camp in America at AKA and re-break all the like things that you don't take from, from Muay Thai, like the stances, the, you yeah. know, the high stance. And, the, and the, so I was always having to re-break that, but then try to hang on to the good stuff like the elbows and the kicks and the knees and things like that. So I wanted to build a gym that was adequate as in America, but in Thailand and a perfect location. Uh, and so that's kind of what, where my idea for AK Thailand came from. And it'd be great to have you guys out and uh, and train and, and, and yeah, show you guys the islands. For sure, bro. Like, right, right, right when this opens up, that's this, that's one of the trips on, that's on, on my list. So... Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get out there soon. We actually got Lord Zilla coming um, next month to do a seminar at our gym. He's staying for a week. Oh yeah. Um, and that's what yeah, that's how that's how I was trying to come out there and train with actually when I, when the king died and he, he ended up leaving. So. Oh wow. Yeah, it's cool that he's coming out. To Coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, probably. So. That's, That's awesome, cool. dude. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, listen, I want, I want to say thank you guys so much for taking the time, especially for doing the podcast together. Um, it was great talking to you, Anthony. I never got to speak to you for, for so long before. It was really nice to to get to, to get to a nice conversation with you. And then, Sergio, good luck in your fight coming up July 24th. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to see that, man. I can't wait to see uh, Bellator return and see how it is. And then seeing you headline is going to be awesome. Hopefully you get a big win. And uh, – Good luck to both of you guys, and hopefully I'll have you back on the show here in the future. For sure, bro. Thanks, man. We'll talk All right, soon. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Take care. All right, there you have it. Anthony and Sergio Pettis. 
Uh, great to have both of them on the show, um, both at different points of their career. Um, it's great to see how focused Sergio is. He's he's a hundred percent in on fighting, and that's where you got to be where he's at in, in his career right now. Um, and it's great to see Anthony also doing good, winning fights, but he's also setting himself up for his post career, which is very very important. Um, I never can stress that enough to fighters how important post fight careers are and at least getting the people around you that's, that can help you um, it, while you're focused on fighting and while you're focused on your camps. Um, big win over uh, Cerrone, uh, so we'll see what's next for Anthony. I don't think he really knows right now, but I'm looking forward to it. He always has exciting fights. Um, hopefully he does get that Anderson Silva fight. That would be an incredible fight. It's hard to imagine Anthony fighting at 185, it's, but he just doesn't care. He'll fight, he'll fight apparently at any weight and whatever, but I can definitely see him being a super fight kind of fighter now. And I think that's the best option for him because, you know, he's put his time in, he's earned his belts, and, and he's such a showy fighter. He's not going to be boring, and there's a lot of good matchups I think we can, we can see with him uh, in a super fight situation. Uh, best of luck to Sergio coming up on the 24th. It's only a week away. Um, Again, he sounds motivated. He sounds ready to go. And I always love watching him fight as well. These brothers are so good for each other. I think it's a great dynamic, and it was so good to have them both on the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a comment. Um, let us know what you think. Let us know who you want to see on the show. Let us know your ideas. Uh, subscribe for sure. If you're on the audio platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, you can leave a review on some of those. We appreciate the reviews. Subscribe as well. Thank you guys for the support, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Thank you guys, man. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, I got a funny story for you. Yeah. I got a funny story for you. So um, I was with Eric Koch. We were in New Orleans, and we are uh, trying to find a sauna. And he's like, fuck, man, he's fighting at 45. He's like, I got five more pounds to cut. So I'm like, Googling places to find a sauna. And the only thing that pops up is like this men's bathhouse. So we go to this men's bathhouse and they're like, they're like, you know, it's like, it's pretty sketch. Like these guys will like come up to you and like try to like, like you got to make sure you're like on your, your A game in there. Like don't shoot, don't make any <laughs> eye contact. So we walk in and the first thing that's there is a cutout poster of you. Really? <laughs> No the cutout poster of Mike Flick, a UFC picture. Yeah, yeah shredded. Two shredded, yeah, right in the front. <laughs> That's that crazy, hilarious. man. That's so, crazy. In a yeah, bathhouse? I was going to tell you that. Like, so me and Eric Coke, like, me and Eric moved back to Iowa, but whenever we talk about, like, like stories, we're like, do I remember that? Uh, <laughs> so that one time we were in uh, uh, New Orleans, and we, we had to cut that weight. It's so hilarious. I know, it's, it's, it's hilarious, bro. Yeah, I was like, uh, you walk in, and, you're just in the corner with your UFC thing. It's like Mike Swick. I'm like, dude, that's just shredded. Just shred it. Yeah, all these dudes are like just drilling over you. See, this is the reason, bro. This is the reason why um, you become a champion. Because, see, I didn't become a champion. And then now my posters in, end up in bathhouses. So that's why, <laughs> that's why Sergio, you become the champion like like Anthony, yeah, and y'all yeah. go that route, <laughs> and y'all never have to deal with this kind of stuff. See me, it's a different story. <laughs> I'm on clearance racks, you know, action figures falling apart, not in the game anymore, you know, showing up in bathhouses oh, with my cutouts. You were glorifying. You were, you were glorified. You were like the main attraction in that place. Like to check in, <laughs> like they had to look at you. So it was like you and the check-in guy. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wonder if it's still up. <laughs>